Welcome to Attack and Adventures. We're about to go into your Grando flag at the 82nd Airborne Museum. Here's one of the War Bond posters. I love War Bond posters for some reason. But this is to have and to hold. And if you don't know what war bonds are, you bought them to help support the wars, like for World War II, because we were fighting two wars then. This is Happy New Year's Day from the whole populations of Villers, Lee, Tool, of the Horacle, Defenders of Beston. And it was a New Year's card to the United States. On December 16, 1944, the Germans launched a surprise offensive through the Ardennes Force in an attempt to capture and to drive a wedge between British and American forces in the northern France, initiating the Battle of the Bulge. might not be able to hear me there's a kid playing from the with something from the souvenir shop the World War II invasion flags these flags were made of various materials including paper oil cloth gauze and cheese cloth they were issued to paratroopers in World War II and depending on the unit they were worn on the left or right sleeve of the M142, no, 1942 jump jackets. Paratroopers wore these flags to distinguish themselves as Americans in order to minimize the risk of being mistaken for enemy soldiers. Here are some more war bond posters. Will you have a part in victory fight? or buy Bond's third Liberty Loan. And this is the 36 star United States flag. France commissioned a local seamstress named Victoria to make this flag in 1944 during the German occupation. Victoria created the flag for memory, resulting in the flag having 36 stripes while the United States flag had 48 at the time. Safe Madame Le Berhurek safeguarded the flag until the end of the war. She put the flag out when Lee de Groulx was liberated. Sixty years later, the flag was presented to the veterans of the 94th Infantry Division. The 48 star American flag, Los Bianos. Alfred J. Croft rescued this flag from a fire at Melania Carnival in the early 1920s. He was later presented the flag by Governor General of the Philippines, General Leonard Wood. A self-taught pilot who served in World War I came to the Philippines with his family following the war to help train Filipino flyers. On January 1942, the Imperial Japanese Army imprisoned Croft's wife, Selma, and two children, Patty and William. Originally, entered in Santo Thomas. The family was eventually moved to the Los Banos in, internment camp on the Philippine island of Luzon. Unbeknownst to her children, Mrs. Croft kept this flag hidden during their 37th month imprisonment. To reveal an American flag during Japanese occupation would have meant severe punishment if not death. On January 7, 1945, the Japanese unexpectedly left the camp unattended 
and offered the flag, Mrs. Croft offered the flag to be hoisted above the camp at the request of the attorneys governing the council. The American flag flew over Los Banos for only a few days, but it brought great joy and hope to the prisoners. The flag was lowered and hidden away before the Japanese returned to the camp, but they soon discovered that the flag had been flown in their absence. The Japanese searched the barracks repeatedly for the flag, but it remained hidden. The Croft family was freed during the raid on the 23rd of February 1945. The flag remained in the family's possession until Croft's daughter, Mrs. Patty Kelly St Stevens, graciously donated to the Airborne and Special Operations Museum in 2018. Wow. And I'll back up to show you how big it was, or is. That's how big it is. This is the fragment of the Star Spangled Banner. Right there. The fragment is displayed with a calling card and envelope found in Paris among the personal effects of Miss Laura Emery, who died in 1967 at the age of 78. The calling card is inscribed with name Eleanor H. Emery, envelope Mark Eleanor L. Hunt. 24 September 1873, a piece of star spangled banner which floated over Fort McHenry during the bombardment of 1814. And this is on loan from the Star Spangled Banner Flag House and Museum in Baltimore, Maryland. And this is the flag that he is talking about. And there should have been 48 stars at that time. And that uh, flag was, I guess, about four days after we jumped in, was presented to me by the prisoners. And uh, I used that. Well, I, I found that it was useful when I was moving the, some of the ambulatory prisoners from the prison camp down to the southern tip of the island uh, after the first... Hold on a minute. still part of that flag. The American flag is sewn on the right arm sleeve with the field of stars facing forward. This is a desert camouflage uniform in the United States Army. For This was like Enduring Freedom 2001-2014. So that's what the flag would look back like. And this one is 
American flags on the U.S. Army's advanced combat uniforms are attached with Velcro to the right sleeve of the soldier's coat. The field of stars is facing forward, invoking an image of the flag in motion. So that's what that looks like. American flags were issued to paratroopers in World War II. And depending on the unit worn either on the left or right sleeve, so there, and here's a faded one. So I'm gonna do this, there, okay. So these are jump jackets. And this is for the 82nd Airborne Division paratroops during World War II. And I'm gonna show you the whole views of it. Here's some quotes and things about the American flag. And here's one of them by Abraham Lincoln. I'd rather be assassinated than see a single star removed from the American flag. 41st Engineers on Parade at Fort Bragg, NC, 1942. The American flag has not been planted on foreign soil to acquire more territory, but for humanity's sake, President William McKinley. One of my favorites is by John Wayne. Sure, I wave the American flag. Do you know a better flag to wave? Sure, I love my country with all her faults. I am not ashamed of that. Never have been, never will be. John Wayne. In the times that the flag has been raised, Iwo Jima, 9-11, on the moon. I don't know where that's at. Who really designed the first flag of the United States of America? On June 14, 1777, a second congressional, no, a second continental congress passed the first flag act which states that the flag of the United States be made of 13 stripes, alternate red and white, that the union be 13 stars, white and a blue field representing a new constellation. But who designed the nation's first flag? Although not as well known as Betsy Ross, most historians credit Francis Hawkinson, a member of the Second Continental Congress and signer of the Declaration of Independence from New Jersey as the designer of the first flag of the United States of America. While no sketch or authenticated example of Hopkinson's flag survived, several records exist at the period referencing his links to its design. Historical accounts describe his flag pattern as having 13 six-pointed stars representing the new states on a blue field arranged in a staggered arrangement with alternating red and white stripes. While the journals of the Continental Congress imply that Hopkinson designed the flag, his claims of the compensation for his work were rejected. Congress stated that others contributed to the flags designed and Hopkinson could not take full credit. The Pledge of Allegiance was written in 1892 by Francis Bellamy. 1855 to 1931. It was originally published in the Youth Companion on September 8, 1892. And we all should remember and know that I pledge allegiance to my flag and the republic for which it stands, one nation indivisible with liberty and justice for all. Your grand own flag, the flag of the United States of America, an enduring symbol of patriotism, service, and sacrifice. The flag of the United States of America has been a constant symbol of strength, honor, unity, and freedom. This unwavering emblem of liberty 
personifies the resolve of the American people to endure as they have done since the War of the Independence. The flag has weathered the test of civil war, the assassination of four presidents, two war wars, the Korean War, Vietnam War, civil unrest, the global war on terrorism, and still remains for most citizens a source of patriotic optimism, pride, and inspiration. The flag is an ever-evolving symbol that reflects the growth of the nation and serves as a permanent reminder of iconic moments in the country's 242-year history and acts as a banner of American citizens under which to unite in times of national tragedy and crisis. This is a bit explores the history of the flag of the United States of America in the context of important United States flags in the museum's collection from World War II through the global war on terrorism. And thanks for watching Attack and Adventures today. And go subscribe and hit that like button and go attack your day.